Your son is a remarkable young man. It wouldn't surprise me if he has more in common with Einstein, Mozart, and Picasso than he does with us. If you eliminated the autism gene, you'd lose so many scientists and so many mathematicians and so many musicians. There's so much greatness in it, so I really wanted to celebrate that. So I wanted to dissect how does Chris get these skills and understand how he became this man, a creation of his father, all generated by love. One of the things that I think is the most important when you're going to portray a person with an autism spectrum disorder is that you understand that everybody is different on the spectrum. Can our son lead a normal life? Define normal. Chris, Ben's character, he's on the spectrum. He has autism. So when Ben and I decided to do the movie together, I said to Ben, you can't just show up and play a guy with Asperger's. It's not only knowing how he moves and speaks. It's like, how does he breathe? Everything about this guy, we have to get this right. So it was important that you know he was willing to do that work. And he said, of course. You're angry. Oh, this is bullshit. Gavin O'Connor contacted me and asked me if I would be able to set some of the actors up with various children and young adults on the spectrum so that they would be able to get a sense of the diversity and really learn a little bit more about what some people on the spectrum might be like. Your son's not less than. He's different. If we let the world set expectations for our children, they'll start low and they'll stay there. We did a lot of research. We visited a lot of homes and schools. And ultimately, it had to be honest, but also land in a place that resonates and feels real. I can answer any questions that you have. I have no questions. I wanted to know what goes on in his mind. How is he different? And then bring that puzzle in and work it into the larger context of the story in an entertaining way. In autism spectrum disorder, typically what we're looking for is people who have two main issues. One would be considered a social communication difficulty. And that can range from anybody from a child who isn't able to communicate their wants and needs through verbal means. They might be able to communicate through alternate communication. Hello, dreamboat. Shall we chat? and all the way up to people who have incredibly advanced vocabularies. But their ability to have a conversation can be very difficult. So I studied accounting at the University of Chicago, where fun goes to die. Why does fun go to die at the University of Chicago? Um, no, it's just an expression. And then the other area is we're looking for what's called a limited behavioral repertoire. And what that means is that most people on the spectrum show some type of either repetitive behaviors, they like to spin things, they flap their hands, they like to line things up. So we're looking for the combination of these two things. It was challenging to pull that off because he's genius, so he can do things and see things and patterns and numbers that other people can't. Christian has his desire to be very precise in several different areas and will practice until he feels like he has everything perfect. And that would fit in with some of the things that we do see with people on the spectrum. Not on my best day. He became very efficient. And that all ties into who he is. When he gets into difficult situations, he knows how to get out of them. Because of his childhood and how he was raised, he had a very strict upbringing from his father, who trained him the best way that he thought he could to survive in the world, given his diagnosis as a young boy. Enough. Aggression correctly channeled overcomes a lot of flaws. Tapping into that aggression requires peeling back several layers of yourself. Get up. What you often see is a lot of times parents trying to figure out how to navigate these waters. And when you're a brand new parent and you don't know anything about this, you have no idea what to believe, what's going to work. And the fact is, is no one thing works for every child. So it's also this matter of taking what are your own philosophical beliefs and then trying to navigate these very complicated systems. So we think it makes sense that Christian's dad clearly had some difficulty in the beginning, but also clearly loved his child and wanted to raise him to be a strong and independent person. Victim or not, make a decision. His dad created a man who had skills in fighting and weapons. <laughs> But his dad really never understood the mathematics of his brain. Chris is a math savant. He lives on his own. He has a set routine. 
which is why this forensic accounting lifestyle makes sense for him. For a lot of people on the autism spectrum, math is an extreme strength. So accounting can be something that somebody on the spectrum would be very interested in doing because they like to spend time with numbers. And as Christian does in the movie, being able to find that one little itty bitty mistake amongst a huge calculation can be quite easy for them, where for somebody like me, <laughs> it would not happen. So finding an interest and a passion like that in a career in accounting would be something that oftentimes people on the spectrum might very much enjoy doing. Hi. Um, Hi. Um, I, I'm Dana Cummings. You're... The... Chris. Hi, Chris. I'm Dana. Cummings. The relationships that he has had, those are gone. So he has no close personal relationships. And then he meets Dana Cummings, and they start to develop a relationship, which he is not accustomed to. Dimensions which are perfectly adequate for one person. Preferable, even. What was portrayed in the movie was Christian's real desire, but also his difficulty in navigating these waters while still really wanting to. But the idea that he was really trying and sometimes might make some social faux pas, but learning from those and really showing how much he really did care about Dana. She gets Chris. She understands what it's like to be different. She sees his heart as he does her, and he starts to have happiness and to have human connection, which is hard for him. He can barely look at me in some scenes because, you know, his character is so uncomfortable. But Ben finds a way to make the oddities so charming that I think Dana is really drawn in and is even more drawn in by his vulnerability and his strange behaviors. He's physically so different from Dana, but he's the one who's emotionally feels like he needs to be protected. Chris, why are we here? I wanted you to like it. Usually, Chris will pack up and go. He's finished and he moves on. It's the first time he actually stays because of a girl. We wanted to make sure that everybody understands that many people on the spectrum are quite interested in having relationships. And they do get married, and they do have children, and they are employed, and they lead what would be considered a typical life. What's interesting about this is that it shows you that despite the fact that people say, oh, well, you have these problems, in fact, you can be quite skilled and quite powerful. And hopefully, it'll be some form of inspiration to some folks who see it. To me, it's like it's a really good time right now in 2016 to be different, where I think for a long time it was pushed away. It was important for me that we celebrate Chris and we celebrate anybody that's different. I just wanted to do that.